Hi, I'm Christopher Warnock of Renaissance Astrology, and today I'm going to be talking about the different types of protection talismans that we have available at Renaissance Astrology. So I'm going to go through each of them in detail and talk about them, talk about their sort of different powers, um, and kind of give an overview of you know what we've got in terms of and what's possible in terms of different types of protection talismans. It's interesting because people tend to think in terms of talismans of planets. So the automatic thing is, okay, which planet? If you look at our traditional sources, the real focus of protection is with fixed stars. So we're going to be talking about a lot of fixed star talismans because these are the ones that are really highlighted in our traditional sources as really being good for, for different kinds of protection. So I think right off the bat, um, spiritual protection is something that people are definitely focused on. Um, this is protection from curses, from magic, from evil spirits, but also from the fact that there's just a lot of negativity in the atmosphere sometimes. I mean, if you've got a problem with somebody, um, if you're there, you know, there's a lot of emotion, then there's also a, a spiritual component to that as well. Um, and there's also just sort of like jealousy and envy and things sort of floating around, negativity. Um, and again, these spiritual protection talismans are very useful for dealing with that. And I think that, you know, it's become almost automatic to look at algal. Now, algal is definitely our most powerful protection talisman. Um, and, um, you know, it's a great talisman, but it may not fit your needs. You know, it, this may not be exactly what you're looking for in terms of a talisman. There may be something that's, that fits it better, or it, there may be a talisman that you kind of are more compatible with or that you're more, you know, that, that feels right for you. The other thing about algal is people get nervous about it. There's a lot of misinformation out about algal, a lot of fear. Um, and you know that's something that people will they'll read about the predictive quality of it, which is generally negative, and then they'll assume that that's uh, a problem for the talisman when it when it's when in fact it's not. Um, I have a very interesting page about the different modes of algal. This is something we've been able to go into more detail. I think with all um, celestial factors, fixed stars, planets, there's lots of different interfaces, lots of different ways of interacting with them. With uh, algal, we've actually kind of gotten into this in more detail. The, the black and white algals, and you can check out, there's a link to the black and white and red algal page. Red, you don't want to mess with, but black and white are very interesting. These are different modalities of, of working with uh, algal. Um, and so we have, we try to keep in stock with uh, bronze algal talismans. You can see them right here. Um, these, uh, this is the image that comes with the, the algal. Um, the, the bronze algal talisman can be used either um, for the black and white if you want to go ahead and do that sort of uh, fine tuning of the interaction. The, the black algal is a much more aggressive. It reflects back anything that's thrown at you by, the, you know, by somebody, uh, negativity, whether it's conscious or unconscious. Um, so that's the, more, the, the most powerful, but also sort of the most aggressive. The white algal is a shielding. Okay, it, it's much, you know, it's not aggressive. It's basically just shielding you. It's protecting you without the, without throwing anything back. So that's a, that's the response that I take typically. Uh, but again, you can, everyone has a sort of their own approach and their own, what they feel comfortable with and what they feel fits their needs. So again, the bronze algal talisman, it's bronze algal talisman, um, can be used uh, either in the black or white uh, mode. Um, so, but the thing is that you don't want to get stuck on algal. It's sort of like, oh, well, look at algal, I don't want that, and then just give up. There's lots of different choices for protection talismans. So, if for some reason you get nervous about algal for, you know, whatever reason, or it's not your preference, um, or you have other needs, then there's lots of other things you can look at. Now, a, a talisman I think that's really interesting from a, from a sort of an enemy protection standpoint is the 22nd Mansion of the Moon. Um, and that's can see this is the bronze talisman for that and then here's the image for the 22nd mansion of the moon now what's really interesting about this is this is is a general protection talisman but it's specifically for dealing with um, slander uh, enemies talking behind your back it's a it's a binding a binding of tongues talisman so I sort of think of it as a quiet talisman but like I said also anti-slander uh, people are talking trash about you or something like that talking behind your back this is good. Also, I, I guess I said that I think of this as a peace and quiet talisman. So again, uh, it has the general enemy protection qualities, but also has this quality of you know stopping negative communication about you, slander and sort of defamation, that sort of thing. So very interesting talisman. Um, again, when we come to spiritual talismans, we have a, a tremendous number of choices. Um, each of them sort of has their own 
uh, specialty. They do the general protection for from you know spiritual attack and negativity and things like that, but also have their own specific things that they're good for. Um, so the next talisman is Antares, which is the heart of the scorpion, um, and this is the image for for Antares. Um, this is the core Scorpionus. This is, as I said, the, the heart of Scorpio. Uh, very intense, uh, fixed star. Uh, this is uh, very powerful against evil spirits and demons. So again, in as, long, as well as having the general spiritual protection, if there's an evil spirit or demon problem, this is an excellent talisman um, for dealing with that. So again, Antares, the, the heart of uh, Scorpio. Um, so let's see, we, again, an amazing number of possible choices. The next one we're going to talk about is Vega, which is the, the vulture. Um, this is, it's interesting because people tend to say, oh, vultures, you know, there's sort of a negative influence of that. It's interesting in uh, Egypt, one of the symbols of uh, Upper Egypt was a vulture, and that appears on a lot of Egyptian uh, protective talismans. And you can see this is the image uh, of Vega. Um, and it says it's particularly strong against demons, nightmares, and fears. Um, so this is, again, uh, a good talisman for dealing with negativity, um, for, for, you know, for, for uh, giving yourself some courage, um, and for uh, dealing with that sort of negative energy that's going around, as well as being an excellent general uh, spiritual protection talisman. Um, so the next uh, talisman uh, is, again, another fixed star. This is Procyon. This is an interesting one, as you can see from the, the, the image here. We use the image of a rooster. Um, this resonates with me, some of my early uh, experience with, with, with magic were with, um, the, with hoodoo, and they have this concept of the frizzly rooster. Frizzly rooster, the feathers are kind of, there's a sort of genetic defect in the feathers, and they look kind of funky. And so the frizzly rooster is, is really good at getting rid of negativity, and they'll, they'll you know, the roosters, the, the chickens will go around pecking and picking stuff up. It's supposed to pick up the, all the negativity that's been like a goofer dust that's been thrown down. So it's, it's just interesting the sort of cross-cultural influences. You have this protective talisman that has a resonance in, in the traditional European astrology, of course, and then also in this, in this hoodoo practice. So Procyon, a uh, really cool talisman, uh, spiritual protection, and it's particularly good for witchcraft and protection from magic and spells and things like that. So, like I said, again, um, this is sort of optimized for that as well as having the general spiritual protection uh, powers. Um, so um, then when we sort of pass on to the next one is really kind of an interesting fixed star. This is Al-Qaeda. Um, and Al-Qaeda is a uh, star in the tail of the little bear. Um, and um, the... Um, the the image here is the image for this for Al Qaeda. Let me take my thumb off of it. Now, what's interesting about Al Qaeda is that this is a uh, talisman that is really good for physical protection. So it's specifically for robbers, for assault, assassins. It says, but also is strong against enchantments and and, and spiritual. So it's again a very interesting one. If you're again a, a physical protection as well as a spiritual protection talisman. And because Alkyde is a circumpolar star, it's very close to Polaris, it never sets. So it also has an association with wisdom. And you can see on this is the picture of the, this is the, the Ketub, the, um, the pole. This is the person around which the spiritual life of the world revolves. And so there's a, a heavy spiritual guidance and wisdom uh, component with Alkyde as well, as well as being a very effective uh, spiritual and uh, physical protection talisman. So very interesting talisman. Um, Another interesting talisman, um, and this is, again, a specialized, is um, the 17th Mansion of the Moon. And the 17th Mansion of the Moon, you can see it has the, a, sort of a monkey on the front of it, and that's very prominent in the image. You can see the image of a monkey. Um, 17th Mansion of the Moon is for protection of the home, particularly protection from thieves. Um, so uh, very interesting. And this is, like I said, a mansion of the moon. There's 28 mansions of the moon the 17th, um, and this is a, a very uh, useful talisman for home protection. Um, and again, when we're talking about home protection, another excellent home protection talisman is Denebel Getty. It's the uh, goatfish uh, Capricorn. And again, you can see the image of the, the goatfish. Um, 
Denmo Getty is um, let's see if we get a better yeah better look at it. Denmo Getty is really um, also very useful for um, uh, a, a wide variety of things, um, uh, pr uh, protection of the home, but also for wealth. So this is an excellent wealth talisman, and for success in lawsuits. So lots of interesting effects of this talisman, and I think the image is really cool. I like that goat fish Capricorn uh, image. Um, so um, the next uh, talisman, uh, and this is one that's actually very interesting, is uh, the Kazemi moon talisman. Now Kazemi is a really interesting um, astrological, and it's becoming more and more known uh, as people get more and more uh, knowledgeable about um, astrology. Kazemi is when a planet is within uh, 16 minutes, which is a very small distance um, from, the, um, from the sun. And it increases the power of the, of the planet tremendously, uh, but it's also really good for invisibility. So these are uh, protection talismans in the sense that they're invisibility talismans. So this is a really good uh, talisman if you want to kind of be under the radar. Um, so rather than putting up a shield, this is basically camouflaging you. You're dropping out of the, the view of whoever you want to be protected from. Um, so very useful talisman. So um, I provided links to all those. I kind of zipped through those quickly, but if you're interested in any of those talismans, you can see the links on the YouTube page. Take a look at those talismans. Um, in terms of compatibility with your natal chart, um, almost always a fixed stars are compatible. There's very few contraindications with fixed star talismans, but if you're interested and seriously interested in buying a Renaissance Astrology talisman, you can email me, and my email address is, uh, again, on the YouTube page, with your date of birth, and I'll go ahead and take a look uh, and see if it's compatible. But like I said, you know, I would say you know, 95% of the time, fixed star talismans are, are compatible with people's charts. There's not a lot of um, contraindications. If you do want me to check your chart for compatibility, though, make sure that you check with before you order. So it can cause big problems if people are ordering and then saying, oh, would you check for me? It's like, please don't do that. Um, that that's, that's, a, that's definitely a problem. Um, so um, in terms of choosing which talisman, part of the problem, like you look at Renaissance Astrology, you have like over 100 talismans, and sometimes people get kind of overwhelmed with that. And it's like, which one should I choose? Which one is best for me? And there's an attempt to do it from looking at your natal chart, and it's like, I, I kind of think that's interesting in a lot of cases that people do, you know, like their synchronicities, but that's the same thing as, oh, my uncle was named al -Qaid, so, you know, I think I'll get a talisman. I don't think that you can really look, you definitely don't think you can look at the chart of the talisman and compare it to your own chart. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, you're, it's apples and oranges. I mean, a, a talisman is not a person. It does not have, like I said, it does, doesn't have, uh, you know, like I said, third house would be relatives. It doesn't have relatives or neighbors. It doesn't, and four, it doesn't have a home. Five, it doesn't have, fifth house, it doesn't have children. Six house, it doesn't have illnesses. Seven house, it doesn't have romantic relationships. I mean, so you're really not, they're not really uh, comparable in terms of trying to do a synastry with those charts. Um, if you do it from, like I said, from a standpoint of a synchronicity, like, oh, isn't it interesting that, you know, whatever in the chart, that's fine. But that's going to be true of a lot of other things, too. And you just got to recognize that that's not something, it's like an objective. I think people look at the think, oh, I'm objectively, scientifically comparing these and I can see it works for sure. It's like, I don't, I'm not, I don't buy into that. At the same time, if it's, if it appeals to you, then I think that's a legitimate way of going about it. But I'm not able to look at, I'd love to be able to do it. People say, which is best for me? I could look, oh, your chart says this. There's not a way of telling from the chart whether the, you know, other than it's compatible, we can tell that, you know, the best is not something that the chart's going to be able to say from that. Um, so what, you, in, in terms of making a choice, what I would do is first of all, look in terms of what are your goals? So which talisman's most closely aligned with your goals? Recognizing that the more specific effect that you're looking for, the less likely the talisman's going to bring that for you. If you're like, I want, you know, $5,339 by next Tuesday, that's such a specific goal that it's going to be hard. If you're saying, I want, you know, uh, sustenance, you know, give us uh, sufficient sustenance, give me enough money to live on, that's a little bit more uh, doable goal. Um, what I really suggest in terms of looking at it is, like I said, check out the goals. And then when you've got the, the talismans that fit the goals, use your intuition or use divination. A lot of people will, like I said, I use I Ching, people use tarot, people use pendulum. There's lots of different methodologies of divination. That's a great way of figuring it out. And then ultimately your intuition. 
I mean, which which talisman do you like the most? Which one calls to you? Which one really, you know, which one do you feel feel drawn to in terms of the choice? And that's the best way to uh, to pick a talisman. So again, check out all of our uh, protection talismans. There's a general link to protection talismans as well as a link to all the individual ones that I talked about. You can also see all our currently available talismans at Renaissance Astrology. So I hope you find that interesting. You know, it's amazing. We have this incredible toolkit. We have lots of different possibilities. Um, you know, again, Algol, when people think of protection, they tend to think of Algol. That's our most popular talisman, but there's lots of different choices, lots of different things you can go with. Um, and I'm really excited to share these, and I hope that you find it interesting and useful and are able to find a protection talisman that fits you.